months, a controversial homeless housing project is scheduled to open in Redmond. But many business owners say the county never warned them about the potential impact on profits, and they're still waiting for answers. Kemos Jonathan Cho is in Redmond with the latest. This Patel is doing pretty good. Dr. Christopher Grise is in the business of helping people deal with aches and pain. It's a little tighter. At the Bellevue Redmond Physical Therapy Center. It felt like they just wanted to do this without anybody knowing about it. But admits his own threshold for stress and patience is being stretched thin. And the fact that I wasn't even on it. It's just really frustrating. Grice is talking about King County's attempt to notify businesses in Redmond and Bellevue that could be impacted by the new homeless housing coming into the former Silver Cloud Inn. Well, we are right across the street, so it's definitely a big oversight, I must say. Jessica McMurrow Stefanov owns Briora Ballroom Dance Studio and also says the county never contacted her about the baggage that could come with the opening of this facility, like more crime and illegal drug use in the Overlake neighborhood. I think they need to reassure us that they can carry out this experiment safely. So we asked the executive's office what's going on with outreach and communication. A spokesperson sent us a list of 97 businesses they tried to door knock this past July, but admits 31 of them were never notified because some may have been closed at the time. The county also says outreach teams never followed up with any of the stores and restaurants. Did city council members come by to check in on you? No. Wow. Did the mayor come by to tell you anything? Nothing. Betty Lou manages Regent Bakery and Cafe in the same strip mall and says someone needs to step up on behalf of business owners whose profits could be at risk. More information for all, you know, the neighborhood. Mayor Angela Bernie never got back to us about the concerns from the business owners, but Redmond City Council member Steve Fields did send us a statement that reads in part, we as a city and particularly the mayor have done a terrible job of reaching out to the impacted business community. Some of my fellow council members have scheduled time to talk with businesses as well. At the very minimum, they should call us. Until then, Dr. Grice and some other business owners have formed a coalition to keep each other informed. At this point, I want to know exactly what's going to happen there, what the plan is. Yeah, Mary, canceling a game is never taken lightly. The last thing school leaders want to do is disrupt these activities when students are working so hard. But they also need those students and their families to do their part and stay safe, especially with the season just getting started. The Friday night lights are back, but not every high school football team is kicking off their season as planned because of COVID-19. And that's hard. That's hard for those student athletes. In the Edmond School District, two teams canceled games for Friday night. School leaders say Meadowdale and Linwood both had a person from each program test positive for COVID-19. Parents say it's a tough balance. That's the most important thing is that they're safe and they're healthy. So it's that, it's that weird balance you kind of run as a parent. You're kind of like, well, you know, I love my son and I want him to be having fun, but I also want him to get out. After the district looked at the people's close contacts, the teams didn't have the numbers to safely play. In football, more than any other sport, when you lose certain numbers or certain key positions, you, you can't field a team safely. The district is following state health department guidelines. They say unvaccinated athletes, coaches and trainers who come in close contact with a person who tested positive have to quarantine for 14 days, even if they tested negative for COVID-19. But if close contacts are vaccinated, they don't have to quarantine as long as they aren't showing any symptoms. If you are eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine, I would make sure that you and your household do get vaccinated so we can return to our activities as best as possible. Edmonds isn't alone. In Kent, Kent Ridge High School canceled tonight against Liberty because of a positive case. Last Friday, Eastside Catholic was missing 24 players after a positive case there. With the rest of the season still ahead, there's still many lessons to learn. It is hard, but I think we come back to this idea of what we always tell our student athletes, focus on what we can control. I just wish everybody get the shot so we can get back to normal. Well, when Microsoft workers head to the office here in Bellevue and in Redmond, they spend a lot of money on things like shopping and eating out. Now, business owners I talk to say it's important to do something to stop the spread of COVID-19, but they all say, also say keeping employees at home will really hurt their bottom line. That's tough. 13 Coins Restaurant is just across the street from Microsoft offices located at Lincoln Square in Bellevue. The latest announcement by Microsoft, another blow. Workers will not be returning to the office October 3rd as originally planned. Not having Microsoft, is it's, it's going to be a hit. Definitely going to be a hit. Microsoft employs about 50,000 people in Redmond, Bellevue, and Seattle. Not having them 
immediately in the area, you know, after they get off work for the happy hours and uh, the dining, it's going to take a hit. Microsoft's corporate vice president released this statement today, quote, given the uncertainty of COVID-19, we've decided against attempting to forecast a new date for a full reopening of our U.S. work sites. On August 5th, e-commerce giant Amazon told employees it would delay its timeline for returning to regular work in the office until January 2022. Amazon employs about 60,000 people in the Puget Sound region, many of them in South Lake Union. Other tech giants have followed suit like Apple, Expedia, Facebook and Google. I just think we're going to see the dominoes continue to fall. Jeff Schulman is a professor at UW Foster School of Business. More and more companies, uh, maybe not the same uh, marquee as, as Microsoft and Amazon and some of the others, but I think a lot of companies around Seattle are going to start following suit um, and taking their kind of lead from the, the bigger companies in the region. Now, did the governor say step up to the plate? Well, that's exactly what they're doing here at Cheney Stadium. Now, fans are just now arriving the games with the Rainiers a little bit later on. Well, that's because earlier this week, Pierce County actually already put an outdoor mask mandate for large gatherings in place, the same for King County. And now starting Monday, it'll be a statewide mandate. Look, I don't think it's a great thing you have to wear a mask to go to a Husky game. I wish that were not so. But the reason is because so many people have refused to become vaccinated. The people at the Olympia Farmers Market already recommend guests wear a mask, and now they believe they could be part of the governor's new mask mandate starting next week. I'll still be here. I'll wear my mask. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think definitely some people probably not show up or not, you know, come customers and vendor-wise maybe. Um, but I feel like everybody's doing a pretty good job, though, with, you know, wearing it and following the direction and whatnot. Yeah, I try a different mask, but um, I have difficult breathing and there are no health exemptions from the governor. Ed Legault is one of those vendors who was opposed to the governor's new mandate. And if farmer's market is included, he'll close shop. If he does an outdoor ban, we won't come to the market anymore. Just won't. But other customers at the market are glad the governor is taking the action. I think if everyone just buckled down and, you know, Back, got vaccinated and got, you know, did their their due diligence wearing masks, we'd probably be out of this by now. Governor, is there the potential, though, that if the mask mandates don't do the trick and if uh, vaccinations stall, that you will need to shut down the economy one more time? As I've said for the last year and a half, we're taking nothing off the table. We have no plans to do that. We're not considering to do that. But you can't eliminate things you might have to do in the future. Hi everybody, thanks for checking out our YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell from the Como Weather Team. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for additional news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't ever miss our YouTube updates.